it's taken a while for it to start up here. It's marking as recording from this end. Oh, okay. All right, mine's still spinning. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Then uh, uh, short agenda is only one thing uh, on the agenda, uh, which is the Foxy status, which I know Mikhail's been busy on. So, Mikhail, if you want to go ahead and take it. Yeah, sure. Um, so mostly uh, the thing is to be sure we're all on the same page and we know what are like the fires we need to extinguish before the Foxy release. Um, so I... I made this ticket like, I don't know, like a month, a month and a half ago. Uh, but unfortunately, it's been pretty tough to make any progress on it. So uh, we have a few things. I think all the features we wanted landed. The only thing that's still like on the fly is the Cyclone DDS security plugins. I think they're still not on the master branch. Uh, I don't know if you, if you know anything about that, Sid. You, you may know more than me. So I do not know the status. I didn't check with Kyle because I know Kyle had been working on that. Ted, did you have anything on that? Do you, do you know where he was at? No. No, I can follow up with Kyle on that. Um, okay, so that sounds good. I mean, there is not much to do on our side except that, like, once it lands, we should make sure that it works on the Rust side. Like, those tests are still passing and everything. So just re enabling the tests uh, just to make sure it's usable for Foxy. Uh, and then the other things uh, that have been, so I don't know if you have this uh, GitHub ticket open. Uh, maybe I can actually share my screen, maybe it would be easier. Um, can I just do that? No. Is that is that issue 180? Uh, yes, that's the one. Uh, I share my screen, it just doesn't allow me to share any my window for some reason. Oh. So I share my entire screen. And you'll all see that I have only 200,000 tabs open. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll all right. to so, <laughs> <laughs> um, Can you see my screen now? Yes. yes. OK. So what I wanted to show you is basically this matrix. Um, it, it's not a very happy matrix right now. And so that's what I would like to know if anyone can like give a hand on this. So basically, most of the reasons we have read bits on it is because uh, the Open Robotics CI is not up to date. And so we have a lot of like various open SSL version issues and things like that. One of the main issues I have is like because I'm in Europe, uh, basically my entire day, like right now, the, I still cannot test changes for the Rust 2 CI because they are still running the nightlies. And it's already like 6 PM here. So I would like to know if anyone would be willing to like catch up. We can catch up outside of this meeting if anyone wants so that I can show everything that I've been doing and to try to sync with Open Robotics to get these things going. Uh, I know Jacob started replaying, uh, looking into it yesterday evening. Uh, I just would like to make sure that we can get this done uh, because right now I have absolutely no certainty that SRS2 is working for Foxy. So I, I guess I'm, I'm talking to people on the American time zone more than European one uh, to know if anyone is interested in like following up with Open Robotics for me. So. Just a second here. I want to see when the next TSC meeting is. And then we just had one last week. And otherwise, I can just like I mean, we, we can we can go ahead with whatever we have now. One of the thing I'm a bit uh, concerned about is like. We kind of like waited on landing some features or some fixes because we just couldn't test them. And so I would like to be able to test things. And like <laughs> the feature freeze is already passed, so it's going to be a bit tough to test new features. Um, and so, like, there is was that thing that is like on like requires interaction with Open Robotics. And there is one more thing that I would like to know if anyone has time to look at. Otherwise, like, I won't have time before next weekend. 
uh, which is uh, one thing that again was an open robotics plate, but um, they kind of dropped it uh, a couple of days ago. And the thing was, uh, in order to get all their one participant per process thing merged, they disabled some s rust to features uh, with the plan of updating, do the follow-up work and re-enabling it uh, for the Foxy release. And apparently, like Evan that was working on it uh, said that actually we will not have time to do this. And so I just wanted to know if anyone is also like may have some free cycle this week to look into. So the change shouldn't be that big. Uh, it's really just how we generate the SROS2 policy files. So before what we're doing is what we're asking RCLPy to give us a list of node names and types. And from there, we would just like create one identity per node and add a lot of rules in it. And so we want to like do keep doing the exact same thing, but the policy file format has changed. And now we also want to group them per process. So it shouldn't be that big of a change, but I'm just pretty busy these days, so I may not be able to do it. I don't know if Ruffin is on the call. No, I don't see him. Uh, okay, because I would be the person that knows the best this part. Okay, so same thing, I guess. It's just like a, a call for anyone interested in looking at that a bit closer. Uh, and the same, I can do a quick walkthrough. I just may not be able to like actually implement the thing. And it would be pretty sad to actually have this feature lost in Foxy just because the to-do was not addressed. <laughs> that would be a bit sad. Okay, so if I understand you, if I captured you right, then um, you're talking about the the S in specific the SROS2 feature that automatically creates the certificate store, the policy files, and so on. That that one that yeah, one so utility. That's, that's the one that's in the tutorial and and so on, right? That's that's another verb of that utility, uh, and this one is basically allowing you to monitor running ROS system, and just to get the ROS graph. And based on all the information in the ROS graph, generate a policy file. So that's something that's like pretty convenient. As soon as you want to start using security on a bigger system, you don't want to be writing all of this by hand. And so what this feature allows you is basically audit your running system and like listen to every connection and create for you a policy file saying, hey, the, this token node needs a, a publisher on the chat or topic. And this listener node needs a subscriber on the chat or topic, this kind of thing. You know, is there anybody on the call that has any extra cycles to work on that? Silence. OK, Mikhail, oh, I, 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 <laughs> go ahead. So uh, this is Roger Strain with Southwest Research uh, representing GDSC. I don't actually have cycles right now because we've got a lovely little funding thing that has to be worked out before I'm allowed to actually charge project time. If that comes through, I would love to reach out to you and try to see if I can figure out what needs to be done and if there's a way that I can help out. But that's pending paperwork happening in the background before I can jump in. All right, sounds good. So I guess what I'll do is then I'll, I'll poke uh, the folks from Open Robotics on the Matrix chat see if i'm pretty sure they're like very very busy as well but just to try to get them to pick up that to do that they dropped last minute and uh and if roger happens to like be able to work on this that would be awesome and i'm more than happy to work to work you through it and worst case scenario i'll just work late and do it someday <laughs> yeah if i get the okay i will let you know asap that's awesome thanks uh, yeah, so I guess for the Foxy status, that was a, that was basically all. Is just like I would love us to make sure we have something that works before the release, and, um, and otherwise we have like a couple open issues, but most of them are like actual small bugs that we could bug fix even if the API freeze is passed. So nothing is really urgent, but that could be also a good opportunity for anyone like not as involved in the project that wants to like get some like more entry level issues. Uh, so Roger, that's the same thing. Like if you happen to like be able to work in the next, not, not this week, but in the next couple of weeks and you're looking for 
things to like approach what is done on the security side, this could be some pretty good issues as well. Sounds great to me. Um, and uh, yeah, and the, the only other thing on the on the agenda item is actually something that I haven't revisited yet, and I don't know if anyone else has. Uh, and because it was mostly to change our CL API before the API freeze, I think we missed the window. So <laughs> I guess it's going to slip for another meeting. Yeah, I know. I just want to talk with uh, Kyle and Joe about that. I think our, our pressures, we discussed it, I think, one or two meetings ago. Uh, didn't come to a conclusion on it. I think we wanted to revisit it, but I think that was just after the freeze that we were gonna we were gonna see what to do about the request. All right. And um, the other thing, the other thing we had on our plate with Kyle was to actually revisit all the SROS two public API. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's the same thing. Like I think the link to the document was there. So if anyone wants to comment on it, it's still welcome. I think so far it's been only Kyle and me. Um, but that's the same thing. Like this is not a very high priority thing anymore now that the API freeze is passed. So we'll revisit it next meeting, I guess. And I think that's all from my side. So I'll give it back to you, Sid. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, does anybody else have anything, particularly about the Foxy freeze or uh, uh, any other comments or work in progress or anything like that that you'd like to update on? Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure who in here is particularly familiar with the architecture of ROS2 launch, but one of the things we're currently working on is the secure tag for ROS2 launch, wherein we're going to use NodeL to get a snippet of what a launch executable will be adding to the ROS graph and automatically generating uh, certificates and keys for those particular nodes, uh, hopefully pending the future work on uh, policy generation, we can work out policy generation. But right now, the minimal viable product is just going to be uh, node certificates and keys. And we have a couple of architecture ideas as far as how to implement that in uh, the existing launch code, but launch is a very large, very undocumented project. So if anyone here is particularly familiar with it, uh, it would be good to run it by uh, like our proposed implementation, how we're going to slot it into the existing launch project. It may be, I think not many people outside from the people that developed it are very familiar with it. Uh, but even that has been working a bit on s too recently as well for the contact thing, I think he's one of the main authors of the launch and launch Rust thing. So that may be a good person to try to set up a meeting with. Perfect, yeah, we have- Or, or William, like William made the design, but I'm not sure. Like. There are a few other people that are pretty familiar with this. Yeah. Um, I was planning on pinging them. Uh, we have a design doc that I'm going to put up on the forum soon once I have a minimal viable product to show. So hopefully when that's ready, I'll ping the matrix group so you guys can take a look at it and verify as well. But uh, the we'll have a minimal viable product and an explanation of why we put it where we did. And hopefully that will also kind of give people an idea of what launch does so that any future feature functionality we want as far as automating security on the launch end, uh, you guys will help understand what's possible and what's not currently. That's awesome. I have one quick question. Can you just give us a, a, a very quick pitch of the, the use case, like uh, what, what problem we're trying to solve and 
I, I know it's going to be detailed in the design doc, but uh, yeah. maybe that will give us a better understanding. The idea is uh, when you're running ROS2 launch, launch file, uh, you can add a minus minus secure tag and the uh, launch subsystem will automatically in a set temporary directory, generate a key store, look up the NodeDL files for that particular uh, package that that launch file is contained within and generate uh, the keys for e and certificates for each node after evaluating all of the remapping arguments and substitutions that you specify in the launch file. And would that be an option? Would you have that option without launching the nodes? Or is it like it will do that and launch the nodes? Or is it, it something? Do that and launch the nodes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because that, that's one thing that like is surprising to me is like I don't I don't expect uh, recommending anyone to do that on a deployed system in a sense that like the, the person that has the authority to generate certificates, uh, like this certificate authority would most likely never be on a robot, but it would be pretty convenient if you could like ahead of time saying, okay, like this certificate authority uh, that knows what is going to be deployed can just take the entire application set of launch files and introspect them generate and sign things and then this is ready to be deployed on the robot but without actually launching the nodes then yeah that definitely seems like functionality uh so part of the issue is the substitution system which backs the remapping arguments is baked into the launch code and it's only evaluated when the individual node action in ROS launch is being visited by the launch service. So in the exact moments before uh, the node is actually spun up, uh, that's when the launch service goes through this highly templated series of strings and starts substituting in what the nodes will, you know, what the names of the nodes and the names of the topics will end up remapping to. So it's a little difficult to do that ahead of time without actually launching the nodes. I All right, know. I see. But that's, that may be a good like thing to think of when you when you have this discussion with people that know more about launch. That like it may be actually like several different times in the in the life cycle of a, a robot application, the time where you want to generate all these artifacts and the time where you want to launch it on actual hardware. Right. That's, maybe, I will add that as a consideration. Maybe a quick point here, and it's more a question to, to you two guys uh, who seem to know more about the topic. Um, are we considering, or at least uh, will we consider situations or use cases where uh, CAs uh, will essentially be active throughout the use case so that they can enable external participants to interact with the robotic application? Or are we just assuming that the uh, CA is just going to be shut down uh, during production? That's an interesting question that I haven't particularly gone into. Um... Yeah, I know. I I know. I uh, you know. I I thought about that a little bit, Ted, and and um, just from what I've seen so far, um, ideally, I think the way to do that would be with an intermediate CA, which you could kind of make disposable potentially. You know, generate the intermediate CA and then generate all the downstream key materials off of it, and then you can throw that that CA away at that intermediate CA away if you need to, without throwing away the root CA. Um, the issue with that is I don't think all the middleware support, even though the spec says the, the, the DDS spec supports CAA hierarchies, from the documentation I've seen so far, the intermediate CAs aren't supported. So um, even though that seems like that would be the ideal route to make it, if, if you understand, Victor, what, what you're saying, make a, you know, if you're going to expose a CA, let's expose an intermediate CA, not the root CA. 
Um, and then, and that way you can revoke it if you need to. Uh, but again, I don't think the, from what I've seen, the middleware doesn't all support that yet. Right. So yeah, yeah, your understanding is is, is correct. Uh, I mean, my my limited understanding of the uh, DDS, RTPS, and and secure extensions and plugins is that um, according to to my readings, uh, several CAs are allowed. Like you could have a permissions uh, CA and and also some additional ones, and and potentially even there could be different levels, as you nicely point out. Uh, I guess. I guess I'm just wondering uh, that this discussion related to launch files and also many of the things uh, Mikhail was was kind of like pointing before should probably uh, benefit from us having some sort of like use cases in mind, like just defining kind of like A, B and C use cases and, and trying to go and implement towards them. I don't know, maybe this has happened and I just missed it or, or maybe you just disagree and this is not helpful at all. No, I think I think that's a great idea. And uh, to answer the CA question, that's something we explored when we originally designed SROS2. I mean, we, we had the assumption that SROS2 was a placeholder, basically to allow people to experiment. Uh, and so we would not expect a root CA to ever be shipped on the robot. But we always work with the assumption that like, if every step of the process was modular, uh, and the fact that the DDS spec says that there is a respect of chain of trust, we should be able to have kind of disposable CAs, like Sid was putting it, uh, that could be like shipped with a robot and like sign things, extra things uh, as needed. And um, and so yeah, I think really seeing use cases now because all these like all these assumptions were made based on the state of the spec and the state of our understanding multiple years ago. So it would be good to revisit when we want to like develop additional tools because. SROS2 kind of became a, a single utility. Uh, and while well, the original purpose was to have like an example of how the various steps of the process could be done. And right now we use the same CA, which is a root CA for the identity CA and the permission CA, which I, is not what I would expect a deployed application to do. And so, so I think it would be good to like start a document together or something and put like use cases together to see in what case we would want what type of like certificate authority and what type of security. I think that's a great idea. I think uh, too, one of the things that, that I, it seems like we've been silent on is actually how to manage those keys. So, you know, once you generate everything with the CA, you want to protect the CA. Uh, and uh, I think that that goes probably part of that use case is how to take the CA offline. Um, how to protect the private key materials and so on and so on. So. Yeah, this is part of something that like came up also when we started to re-architect the key store, uh, just like for Foxy actually, like just recently, where you actually have this um, private folder, which is a folder that actually has the CAs, so that is the one that is not expected to be deployed. So we tried to like at least highlight it in the folder hierarchy. Uh, but our main assumption has been that, and like it didn't it didn't become true like so far it didn't come true, but uh, that we would have support for proper key storage, uh, because right now we're talking like files on the file systems are not protected, so for keys of every node, and that's definitely something we like when the various DDS implementations support various TPNs and key storage mechanisms. So again, if we're good with that topic, I think we're just about out of time. Um, I think uh, just to summarize what we covered, uh, uh, as far as Foxy goes, it seems like we're in good shape with one exception, which is the the SROS2 uh, features, um, uh, the the one issue that's, that's mentioned in the agenda there. And um, yeah, Mikael, feel free to shout out on um, on matrix if you need more help with that. Um, and then we talked about the launch file. I don't think we took any action items away from that. So um, does anybody have any other final comments or anything else to add? Uh, 
Okay, so so with that, I'll call it and and say I think our next meeting is uh, in two weeks. Um, I think it'd probably be worthwhile to uh, just have a discussion about the Foxy Freeze and just things led up to it and how you know uh, you know our workflow and make sure everything went as expected with that, uh, just to learn from the freeze. Um, so if nobody else has anything to add. Uh, so thank you very much, and we'll post the meeting minutes and the video recording afterwards. Thanks for organizing. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.